You see, actually, I do not teach, you know, karate because I do not believe in styles anymore. So styles tends to not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. But if you do not have styles, if you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, uh, as a human being, how can I express myself? You won't create a style because style is a crystallization, you know. I mean, that way it's a process of continuing growth. Having studied martial arts for six to eight years now and being self-taught for most of them, I can say one thing for sure is that I didn't truly understand the expression of martial arts till I detached myself from it. Let me say that again, is that I didn't truly understand the expression of martial arts till I detached myself from it. What I mean is this, I strongly believe you don't truly understand something until you detach yourself from it. Meaning eliminate or greatly minimize what you have been previously taught and start learning from there. In the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu says, it is easier to carry an empty cup than one that is filled to the brim. As Bruce Lee would say, be formless, shapeless, like water. One of the best and most underrated methods to becoming a great martial artist is learning to detach yourself from a particular style that you have learned. Let me give you guys an example. I have studied a variety of different martial arts styles, but I closely associate with two to three, that being boxing, taekwondo, and capoeira. But most of the kicks you guys see me do in the follow along kicking videos that I provide you guys are mostly based on taekwondo. So for example, if I'm teaching a student a side kick and I say, hey, throw your side kick like this, I'm coming from the Taekwondo perspective. And he already has previous martial arts experience. And let's say he comes from a karate background and he throws his sidekick a little bit differently. Just using examples, right? I'm not gonna say my student is throwing his sidekick necessarily wrong, unless the technique looks really off and from there we're gonna correct it. But if it's a really good sidekick, just demonstrated a certain way, then I'm here to refine it, not to erase it. See, once I stop ascribing myself to certain styles and how things should be done and just express my art form the way that I would like to, that was the moment that I really started to have fun and enjoy my martial arts journey. Remember, it's not the style that defines you, it's you that defines and expresses you. For example, when I'm coaching my students in boxing, I'm giving them a strong baseline of the fundamentals, technique, learning how to properly throw their punches. You know, your jab, your cross, your hooks, uppercuts. I'm gonna do my absolute best to ensure that their foundation is properly polished. So we're gonna drill those fundamentals over and over again until it becomes like Ultra Instinct Goku. So time is going by and their foundation is really, really strong. From there, I'll allow them to kind of break away from what they've been taught and kind of find their own way of expressing their art form. For example, when I teach the jab, you keep your hands up and you just pop it from there, right? Or maybe I might allow their lead hand just to drop a little bit. As long as you know you're out of range of getting countered, then that's okay. You know, when I'm coaching people, I don't like to tell them that they're doing something wrong. Unless it's just something that's just fundamentally just completely off center. I'm like, yo, we gotta fix this. But other than that, I try to ensure three different things. You have good technique, you feeling nice and relaxed. Most importantly, it feels natural. Those are my basic three principles that I live by. If something doesn't feel natural, that means you don't have the necessary repetitions to carry out that particular function. We want to make sure it's like Ultra Instinct Goku. You don't think about it, you just make it happen. When something feels natural, the technique is usually going to be flawless. It doesn't have to be conventional. I'm not the teacher that's gonna try to tell you, hey, you should do it this way, fight like me. That's the wrong way to go about things. A good teacher knows how to encourage and coach you to have you fight your way in the best way possible. Absolutely no one is gonna fight your battles, whether it's in a ring, cage, gym floor, you gotta learn to fight yourself. Styles provide the tools, but at the end of the day, you have to take charge of the tools and not let the tools use you. And I believe many people fall victim to this mindset. They let their style or a teacher just define their reality. You have to throw a roundhouse kick like this or a lead hook like this, and you don't. If the movement feels stiff, rigid, and unnatural, then hey, let's refine it and make it more effective. Once you do that, start making it flow your way. There's nothing wrong with challenging old ideas and concepts and trying to refine them so that way they can be more effective. So challenge those old ideas. 
challenge yourself. Combine your own styles together. You don't have to be textbook to a particular style because again, that's gonna limit yourself. You wanna make sure you have a strong foundation of whatever art that you choose to do. And from there, branch off and do your own thing. Don't let a particular style define who you are because that's how you become a great martial artist. Make sure you guys smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to make sure you are properly subscribed. I'll see you guys next video. Peace and love as always. And I shave. Boom. We out, baby.